probably ahead of me. Um, there will not be Sunday school for the next two weeks, so please keep that in mind. Yeah. Oh yes, anybody? this next Sunday, anybody who would like to help put together blessing bags at 9 o'clock, come during the Sunday school hour to help do that. Um, <clears throat> then we have, coming up at the end of the month, the free blood pressure clinic and the of course, the carrion meal, which is the south of the border Mexican fair, is the theme. So that's uh, coming up as well. And I have sign-ups for some of these things. We also have coming up on the 30th, uh, the Foodies of Faith are going to go to the Istanbul restaurant on uh, Speedway, just to, the east, just to the west of Country Club, on the north side of the street. So I have sign-ups for that. So. We know how many folks are coming. That's going to be an 11.30 meal there, so please uh, keep that in mind. It's a little earlier than we might normally do. And then we have the sign up for the carrion meal too. Oh, Debbie and Jeff Keen have an anniversary today. Hmm. Adam Ramsey has a birthday. And Allison Waldorf, uh, who I think is living in Montana, from what I last heard. Uh, continuing prayers for Candace Karchner in Hawaii, and then there are the special, special offerings. We're up to $883. Um, the family farm that we're going to purchase at the end of Lent is $715, so we're a bit above that now. Um, so if you have loose change, empty out your ashtray in your car or your cup holders, wherever you happen to throw your loose change and bring it in and put it in the bucket. The counters will be forever thankful. <laughs> <coughs> and then of course, donations for blessing bags are always appropriate. Um, if you are traveling a fair amount and you get, them, get the small items at the hotels or, or motels where you're staying, please bring them home if you're not going to use them. Then all sizes of white athletic socks, new ones, and non-perishable items for the food court. Are there veggies today? Yes, lots of them. Okay, 
So there are lots of vegetables to take for free after church. Thank you, Ron and Becky, for taking care of that. I was driving down golf links yesterday morning, and there was a line of traffic at the Baptist Church on the south side. They were backed up a half a mile. And I'm going, what is going on? At that, and then I realized it was probably a food distribution for one of these groups um, that does the vegetables and other kinds of foods. Um, again, Living Lutheran, um, I'm not thrilled about the news that they're going to stop printing it in print form, but you will be able to get it on your computer. We're still kind of working out how we're going to handle print copies for people who don't have access to the internet and being able to print it out or read it online. So we'll get that figured out eventually, but the, the subscriptions are still the same. Uh, it's $10. And right for right now, that will get them delivered until... The end of the year. The end of the year. So, um, and then we'll kind of keep you on board for what's happening. It's like... Many other magazines, it's become very expensive to produce them physically um, in paper and print. So the church has voted, the church council voted to move it to an all online uh, subscription. Um, let's see here. I think that's probably it. Sign ups are coming around. Um, so please take care of those during the service. And our thanks to Robert Loring for being at the altar today. Um, and the readings today are a little lengthy. So halfway through the gospel, I'll ask you to stand up and sit down two or three times so you don't fall asleep during the reading of the gospel today. Uh, by the way, next, uh, not next Sunday, but on Palm Sunday, um, which is also entitled Passion Sunday, our gospel reading for the service is at the end of the service. It's two full chapters long. Traditionally, congregations have been asked to stand during that reading. I'm not that crazy. Um, but I would like four or five people who would be willing to read a portion of that gospel so that it's not just one person or just me reading it, but, but laity in the congregation as well. And it takes us right through to the time of Christ's crucifixion. So if you're interested in reading on, on the, the, what is it, the 2nd of April, um, please see me after service today and let me know that you're willing to do that. And we'll get you assigned to a section of that gospel. And I think that's probably it for today, except for we begin with the order for confession and forgiveness. It'll be on the screen in front of you or on page 94 in the red hymnal in the pew rack. Good morning. Good morning. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and abandon us to our spirit, so that we may live in service and serve you in the new through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. For his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a baptized child of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Merciful God, the fountain of living water, you quench our thirst and wash away our sin. Give us this water of always. Bring us drink from the well that flows with the beauty of your truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from the 95th Psalm. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving, and let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. O oh, that, oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Do not harden your hearts as at Meribah as on the day Masah in the wilderness, when our ancestors tested me and put me to proof, though they had seen my work. For 40 years I loathed that generation and said, they are a people whose hearts go astray. They do not regard my ways. And therefore in my anger I swore, they shall not enter my rest. The second reading is taken from the, Paul's letter to the Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good reason. For a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom we have now received reconciliation. Reconciliation. According to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. 
The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us the well and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty, or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. <coughs> Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, What do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, sure one, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I've ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of Jesus' word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Holy Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. my brain fresh.
It's interesting that in our lectionary for the year, today's gospel reading is listed as baptismal thinking about the, the spirit of Christ and God washing over the woman at the well in Samaria. We, we in the Lutheran church tend to think about baptism in more physically concrete ways that um, in order to be baptized, you have to have water and God's word. Um, and you have to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the guidance we get in scripture from Jesus. The, the whole thing is right now is that this lady isn't baptized. She's at the well by herself probably because she's been ostracized by the rest of the community. You don't usually go get your five gallon jug full of water to carry back into town in the heat of the midday. The women would have gathered early, early, early in the morning, closer to sunrise to come gather their water and probably all the other women in this city had, but not this one. She knows she's excluded from that community of people have to wonder how many of the women who come to the well was she married to their husband before they became married to that individual. Um, after all, if she's had five marriages and is now living with yet another person who is not her husband, um, chances are there's a lot of frustration around her. She understands very little of the, the story and history of Jacob's well. But she does understand one of the key and most important things about this well and about the coming of the one who is supposed to really take care of all of God's children, the Messiah. So what a surprise for her to be encountered at the well by someone I suspect she already knew was Jewish more Jewish than her at least. You know, it's like me, I can claim Swedish, but I also have to claim Danish and Irish and English and a little German along with it. Hard for us to understand because in the North, the people were driven out of the North a hundred years before the exile of the Southern Kingdom. And they were dispersed all over the Mediterranean basin. Well, a hundred years is several generations just before the South was sent in to uh, exile. And now it's hundreds of years that those people have brought themselves back into what we call, or what the Bible calls Samaria today. So I suspect there's quite a heritage there. But yes, there's some Jewish somewhere in her family line. But there's probably also um, people who would have been from Turkey, people who would have been from Greece. Um, who knows, there could have even been barbarians from the north uh, who her family was involved with, you know, those Germanic folks. So she comes from a, 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 a mixed heritage just like most of us do. Now, there are very few of us who can even claim just two backgrounds in our genetic heritage. Now, Pastor Ron is as Norwegian as you get. I understand that. <coughs> so, but for me and for most of us, we come from a heritage that's very mixed. And that's true whether we are Anglo, have an Anglo heritage or an African heritage or an Asian heritage, we all are blended genetically. So here she is and she knows that the Messiah is going to come. And here stands a Jewish man who she probably identifies by what he's wearing, by the clothing he wears. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> that he is a Jew. And he has the audacity in the heat of the day to say to her, give me some water. Well, that would be the typical way for a Jewish man to treat a Samaritan woman. I'm not sure I like it very much about Jesus. 
I'd like more of that loving kindness to ooze out of him at this point at the well and for him to ask very nicely, would you please get me something to drink from the well? But we know her response was appropriate. Sir, how do you expect to get a drink? You have no rope to drop a bucket. You have no bucket. None of this is going to work out for you. <clears throat> and so he asked her again, give me a drink. If you had known who was speaking to you, <coughs> excuse me, if you had known who was speaking to you, you'd have gotten me that drink the first time I asked you. By the way, would you please get me a drink? <laughs> I think there's a water bottle there someplace. <clears throat> How appropriate. <laughs> I'm sure Jesus felt the same way after walking in the dust and dirt with his disciples. <clears throat> Uh, no, that was not planned. Um, so, obviously, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, washes over this woman so that she reaches a point in her life of wondering if indeed this man is the Messiah. He's told her things that no Jew should know about her. And so she at first identifies him as a prophet, but then there's more than that. There is the power of his speaking to her. There is the power of his presence, which you and I gain and learn about from the presence of Christ in each of us. How we experience the living presence of Christ in baptism, in the Holy Communion, as we are surrounded by people who have the Spirit of Christ in, with, and around them in their lives. Somehow that happens for her. She did not go to the well and Jesus did not do as Paul did, draw the water out of the well and baptize 3,000 um, at the well or the, at the ones the disciples did in the same way. She is not taking any water onto herself to be baptized. Only the Spirit of Christ which has washed over her. We had to learn something from this in the Lutheran Church when we talk about baptism being the prerequisite to receiving communion or to believing in Christ. We know that baptism is an important truth-telling event, the truth of God and Christ telling event in our lives. But it is possible, as Peter found out when he went to the home of the centurion, away from the other disciples, that that whole family, the centurion and his family and their servants and slaves, had come to believe in Christ and no one had ever baptized them. That was another case of the spirit of Christ and God washing over an entire family distant from Jerusalem. And it was an important thing for Peter to learn Yes, you can believe and accept Christ as your Lord and Savior without coming to the font. Oh, did I don't tell the bishop I said that. <clears throat> because we've seen it. We've seen it happen for people. We know it is the truth. We know that it's happening in this gospel reading with the presence of Christ. We know what happened to the centurion and his family and his servants and slaves. And it was a learning experience that people, the, for the disciples to learn that people could come to Christ without their presence with them, baptizing them. The jailer came to believe in the Spirit and then was baptized. Now that was a pretty funky experience. You know, all the jail cell doors sprang open and all the prisoners left except for Paul and was it Timothy? I don't remember who was with him. Ron, who was with him? Silas. Silas, thank you. And they stayed because they knew that it was wrong for them to escape, that the jailer would be punished, maybe even die for their escape from prison. <clears throat> and he came to believe because of that witness that they had offered because the presence of Christ had washed over them. 
So if you're one who is not baptized yet and you still accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it is because the Spirit of God has washed over you already. When do you suppose that happens for little kids who come up to be baptized at the font? You think that Spirit of Christ washes over them and they're saying at age six days or two months, I believe in Jesus! No. It is the witness of their parents and their congregation and the wash of Christ's Spirit which comes from the people around them that begins to convict their faith so that they come to believe in Jesus out of the goodness and loving kindness of those who are already washed over with the Spirit of Christ in their lives. You, we need to be honest in the church. It's a rough time for the church today. It really is. People think they don't need the church. But what happens, and it's the old analogy, when you pull a coal away from the fire, it goes out. It only gets restored to its brilliance and fire when it's reinserted into the main flame of the fire. The church is where that flame resides today. Has always been the residence of the Spirit of Christ. We just have to help people understand that and to help them know that if they've never been baptized, that does not exclude them from the body of Christ, the church, because their faith may have come directly by the Spirit washing over them and could in fact be stronger than the Spirit which you and I received at baptism. That's why we don't turn people away from communion. We say, if you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are welcome at this table to receive once again into your life the living presence of Christ. It's a pretty extraordinary gift. It is a wonderful thing for us to receive the power of Christ's presence by the power of Christ's Spirit. So here we are. There are all kinds of people in the world today who are just like the woman at the well. They have hidden within themselves great doubt about God's love for their lives because of their sin and brokenness. And you and I are here to say to them, oh no, God loves you. God forgives you through his son, Jesus Christ, and God wants you to be his. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And you notice Pastor Ron didn't stand up and yell, blasphemer. Yeah. <laughs> I almost said He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray now for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for Christ's church, for the specific needs of people for whom we've made requests and who are on our hearts and in our minds, and for all of God's creation. Gracious Lord, we thank you for calling us to worship today. You know, I think I set my alarm, Lord. I got up on time. I 
got my teeth brushed and my 35 hairs combed back and all of those things that have to be ready to go. And I got to church and I did it. No, Lord, your call is in each of our lives through the power of your spirit, charging us with greater and greater faith from day to day and over longer periods of time that we might come to know you more clearly, that we might come to be the ones who speak your word of truth and power and love for the lives of all people. Help us to see in you the love of the Father and the presence of the Spirit. Keep us in your holy care every single day of our lives. Bless us with safety, and help us know from the moment we awaken to the moment we are back to sleep that you are with us, offering us your care. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray for Letitia Clark Rohr. Uh, she had surgery on her eye because of glaucoma pressure. She's home recovering but is very sore. And, and it's causing worry for her that it whether or not it will indeed help her vision. We pray for you to be with Letitia to keep her in your care, that you will bless her with restoration of health and, and especially the reduction of the pressure in that eye, and that her vision will be just fine. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray for Joanne and Kelly. This is been a tough week with animals, though it's certainly not the first for them. But we pray for them at the loss of their much beloved uh, cat, sweetheart, um, who had to be put down due to cancer. We thank you for bringing sweetheart into their lives, for all the love and time um, that they were able to spend with sweetheart. And we know now, as we have learned, that you care for all of your creation. And we pray that that opportunity for restoring of the relationship will come again for Joanna and Kelly with their cat. Hear us, O oh God. Amen. Gracious Lord, and Chris is your nephew, Becky? Yes. Okay. Gracious Lord, we pray for Becky's nephew, Chris. He has been battling cancer, and there is great fear that it is spread. He has pain. Um, he needs a miracle if he's going to live and have some sense of comfort in his life. We pray for you to strengthen his gift of faith in eternal life, that you will bless him and give him confidence and hope, even in the face of this debilitating and, and probably deadly disease. Keep him in your care as he goes through the transitions of this illness in his life and raise up before him your love for who he is and who he will be in your kingdom. Hear us, O oh God. Amen. Gracious Lord, we pray for Annette's brother-in-law, Philip. He remains very sick, Lord, and part of that is because he refuses to take good care of himself. We could say the very same prayer for Debbie's brother-in-law, David, who, through some lack of ability and skill, has not cared for himself well over the last several years. We pray for your presence with Philip and with David, that they will both um, have growing resolve to do a better job of self-care. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is Gracious Lord, we pray for Annette that you'll be with her as she deals with health concerns too. Um, we pray for your hand to rest on her so that the, the health concerns she has do not become more serious than they currently are. And we pray for doctors to find ways to help alleviate Annette's pain. We also pray for uh, Melody's brother Terry and his wife Janet. Their health is not as good as they would like it to be and Janet has been quite critically ill. Uh, we pray that you'll be with them. They're both in their early 80s, um, and we pray that your faith will strengthen them as they grow closer to that time when we all know life will transfer from being in us to being with you. 
Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious Lord, we pray for the Beecham children, that you'll keep them in your care as they continue to deal with all the issues that have come their way because of their mom and dad's deaths. Um, they've got decisions to make in their lives that they never expected to have to deal with uh, until much later in life. And so we pray for them that you'll give them your guidance as they work with the estate of their parents and how to handle all of that appropriately. We pray for Candace, Lisa, and Alexis in Hawaii too. Uh, you have kept them in your care and you have given Candace a great gift in the new experimental cancer treatment she's receiving. We pray for his continued success in healing her. And we pray for Lisa as she cares for Candace at home and across the island, uh, to the other island where she gets these treatments. Uh, be with Lisa, give her courage and strength as well. We also pray for the people who are in storm areas, Lord. Um, 9, 10, 12 feet of snow, no heat, no food, no electricity. Um, there have been a number of deaths of people who have frozen to death in their own homes. We pray that you'll be with the families and their losses, that you'll help people to care for one another while this weather crisis continues to unfold <clears throat> in the mountains above L.A. and the central California Valley. We also pray for Jim Blair's cousins, Jim and Janet, for continued healing for them. And of course, we pray for Jim, that his eye will regain some light and sight, and that his kidney stones will, will be taken care of and uh, help to be passed. We, we pray for Jim too, because tomorrow he's having more teeth pulled, uh, getting ready to have some more, either a denture or implants put in. Uh, we pray that you'll be with him. Uh, to help him decide how things should happen and how he should move forward. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. All these things we pray in the name of your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share the peace of Christ with one another. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This morning we receive communion by intinction. You receive a wafer which you can then dip in the wine in the chalice. If for any reason you are unable to have great products, please know that it is appropriate to receive the wafer alone and still receive the fullness of the blessings of Christ in this sacrament. We invite all who accept Christ as their Lord and Savior to come forward and receive the sacrament of Jesus Christ's holy meal.
and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and forever. Amen. Amen.